What's up everybody, Steve here. Today I'm gonna to talk about how high gas prices can negatively affect your Airbnb investment, whether you currently own one or maybe you're in the process of looking for one. And also I'm gonna talk about six strategic tips on how to buy right so any government intervention, high gas prices, or inflation will have limited negative exposure on your short-term rental investment properties. So let's dive in. The economy in Southwest Florida is insane right now. It's March 2022 and I've never seen so many people here vacationing right now. And I think mostly it's due in part to the pandemic, fear, as well as travel restrictions. Everybody's just been sick and tired of staying home and everybody has been ready to get out. And honestly, I think it's gonna continue on into the summer months here in Southwest Florida. However, and unfortunately, I think this year is gonna show on the books as being one of the better years compared to what's to come. As you can see from this graph, every recession shown in the gray bar has the same commonality. Gas prices were at an all time high. And unfortunately, we can see here, we are in line with the highest gas prices since the 2008 Great Recession. In 2008, I personally experienced firsthand what happens to a down economy in a vacation destination. Gas prices were at an all time high and vacationing and travel even RV dealerships were going out of business because of the cost of fuel to either drive them or pull their trailers. People going out to restaurants and bars slow down tremendously. People were trying to get as lean as possible and save every dime that they had. And vacationing was just not on their priority list. Many real estate investors and speculators were upside down and short-term rental bookings slowed. Those who are cash on these investments or a lower debt position in fully amortized loans survived as they were able to adjust and lower their nightly rate on short-term rental investment properties. However, those with high debt positions and even negative amortization loans had to adjust their nightly rates to keep with competition but they were upside down and in a negative cash flow position. So what can you do to have a recession proof Airbnb investment property so you don't have to worry? Number one is buy for the masses. I suggest buying a smaller Airbnb with a lower nightly rate. Maybe something that sleeps four, which is perfect for couples and small families. Number two, buy multifamily. Can you find a cool duplex? or a cool fourplex or maybe a house with a small guest house in the back, the more doors, the better. Number three, buy options. I love having options with real estate investment properties. So for example, could you buy a house with say, a small structure behind it? Now, what can you do with that property? Maybe you could lease out the property in the front, the main house on an annual basis and then rent out an Airbnb on the back property. Or maybe you move into the main house and then rent out the back property and then you live for free. Or maybe you have the option of doing an Airbnb on both properties. Number four, buy hidden income. How else can you produce income from the property that you're looking at? Is there commercial potential for maybe a tiki bar or some sort of retail or maybe coin laundry? Is there additional land space and zoning that will allow for maybe an RV or some tiny homes? Number five, by convenience, you wanna make sure that these properties are located in an easy access location, especially drivable. Here in Southwest Florida, we do it all the time where we have what they're called staycations where we're always checking out new areas in the area that we live in. And it's important to market to your surrounding community. Because let's face it, a lot of people are going to scrounge up some money to do little vacations here and there, even in a recession. And number six, don't over leverage. You've probably seen other videos on this channel on financial freedom. Take a look at those videos, but I think that over leveraging can put you into a really bad position that has adverse consequences. Make sure that when you guys are running your numbers, run them on rent rates with maybe a reduction. So if the rent rates equate to currently, you know, $60,000 gross, maybe you wanna knock off 15% of that gross figure or even more. This way, if nightly rates do decrease, you have a good buffer. 
I think we're headed to some extraordinary times, and yes, I do believe that we will end up in a recession at some point in time, but I also know that there's always opportunity in recessions. So if you've not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do so because I'm gonna bring you on the journey of buying more real estate, analyzing properties, and investing in certain distressed assets. And if you are subscribed, thank you for being here. It means a lot to me, and I appreciate every subscriber on this channel. Thanks a lot. Thank you.